start talking to people. People can tell you. John Jones, third grade, this little pukey kid. Or they'll tell you an incident uh, that happened to them, and they remember it detail by detail. But when I started reading about Al, then I, uh, and, and I do books on tape because uh, I walk, and the last book on tape I saw was a book called Whipping Boy. And it says, a 40-year search for my 12-year-old bully. So it was something he never forgot. I'm only halfway through the book, but it's, he was in a boarding school in Switzerland, and no mother, no father, and it was tough, tough on him. So uh, I think we all have those memories, and I think Al's going to help us today to cope. And uh, in 1985, Al was operating his karate studio in Redondo Beach, California. And he worked for Parks and Rec, I believe, in Redondo and Manhattan Beach. He is a master of martial arts, so watch out. <laughs> also, he was teaching, when I read this, special education to middle school students. Ay, ay, ay. That's a double whammy. And he also was teaching at the high school level. He has a master's degree in special ed? Yes. He was asked by officials in Manhattan Beach to create a program for children that was not a full-blown karate program, but one that would teach safety, awareness, self-confidence, and realistic self-defense for escape purposes only, not for physical fighting as a first choice. So today we're going to hear about the program that Al Johnson developed and implemented through the years. So I'd like to introduce to you Al Johnson. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Peggy. Thank you. And uh, I'd like to thank the, <clears throat> the group of the Inside Edge Foundation for inviting me and for Rita for writing the article. I appreciate that so much. Kay for guiding me along the way and uh, now Peggy and some of the other people that I've met. Uh, yeah, I started my program. Uh, for, I think before I go into that, I want... This is something I'm proud of, so I have to show it to you. I'm showing off. <laughs> okay. Uh, the National Bullying Conference was in Reno, Nevada in, uh, this year. It was Reno, Nevada. And I attended, and I was a presenter there at the National Bullying Conference. And it was people all over the United States and all over the world, and school officials, all kinds of people. And I was totally, totally surprised that the uh, coordinator, all of a sudden, he says, we're awarding two awards to two bullying uh, programs. Well, I'm sitting here with hundreds of people. I really don't expect uh, my program to be recognized, but it was. And so I'm really proud of that, and I like to pass it around while I'm talking so you guys can see it. It was, uh, it was really heartwarming for me. So let's get started. Um, my program is an eight-week program, and it's a comprehensive program for us, year-round for schools and, and year-round for, uh, and in the homes, schools and homes year-round. And as you know, bullying is an ec epidemic that uh, needs to be effectively addressed. And I say effectively addressed, now I'll go into reasons why. Uh, as mentioned before, I've had 32, 32 years, actually, this is the 33rd year, of teaching anti-bullying, safety awareness, and self-confidence to thousands of children, teens, and adults in California. I've had the pleasure of doing that. It's just been, you know, it's been my God-given gift, I guess, uh, to do that. I taught special education for 25 years at the secondary level. I have witnessed bullying in special ed from minor to severe, including with weapons. I have stories where I've actually been involved with taking a, a knife away, a straight razor like in the barbershop. I took a straight razor away from a 12-year-old who was going to cut the principal's throat. So it's, uh, I witnessed quite a bit over the, over the period of time, to say the least. I am fortunate to have a master's degree in special ed, and I, now I do professional tutoring uh, as an independent contractor for Professional Tutors of America. Let me get a, uh, I don't want to be everybody's way, I'm someone's. And I've authored 12 poetry books on anti-bullying. Maybe I'll stand over here. And does this make it better? Okay. Okay. Um, I'm a writer and producer of uh, children's DVD and music. 
uh, singer and songwriter. Yeah, I try and sing. You know, don't ask me to do that, please. Okay. <laughs> and I have experienced overt and mandated racial discrimination and segregation as a child, teen, and young adult, racial bullying. And I use this today. In fact, I have a book coming out entitled Coming Together in Harmony, subtitle Racial Harmony, Understanding, and Tolerance, which I think we need a great deal today. And uh, <clears throat> thank you. So I use that in my program. I teach children that also so they can learn to respect each other, no matter who you look like, what you look like, uh, where you come from. Uh, I have been in the martial arts for 45 years. I've, and I still teach and train. I uh, train with some of the highest masters. So, uh, and it, it has kept me, I guess, mentally alert and physically in shape, I guess. Uh, but I do not teach fighting as a resort to, as a, as a uh, way to solve a bullying problem. But I do teach controlling and escaping techniques. Uh, the, both the uh, bullies uh, in, in the uh, training program myself, I have three books, main books. There is a, the main poetry book, and I'll go over that with you in a little bit. There's a student workbook, and then there's a parent-teacher guide. So this way, the students, the parents, and the teachers can all work together while the kid is learning anti-bullying techniques, poetry, self-confidence, awareness, training, and the whole process. The history of the program I am going to cover today as fast as I can, lesson one. And with the history of the program, the objective of my training, physical fitness, awareness, and so forth. Uh, I created the program in 1985, as Peggy was mentioning, and uh, was originally called the Young Alert and Aware Program for ages 5 to 15. I changed it to the Bullies Be Gone Project uh, a number of years ago for ages 9 to 17 and adults. Okay, it's for classrooms and home and the training should be ongoing, extending a semester or longer, especially in the schools and in the homes. I looked at the vision of the Inside Edge Foundation for Education. Your vision, if I am correct, says to create a membership organization that supports and showcases authors, leaders, and change agents, and contribute to personal community and planet, planetary peace. Well, that's the, that a great, uh, parallels a great deal with what I do in my anti-bullying program to a great extent. Statistics. Suicide is one of the leading causes of death in children under 12 years of age. The leading cause of death in children over 12. Bullying is a major factor. I, uh, I want to give you an incident, and I tell a lot of stories when I'm teaching children. And uh, this particular story, I was teaching at, at, a, at a junior high school, middle school. And I went to school one day, and a student came up to me and he says, Mr. Johnson, uh, so-and-so has a knife in his locker. I says, a knife? I said, OK. I stayed calm. <laughs> and I said, all right. I knew the student who had the knife. And we had a good relationship. He was in my class. I says, OK. So I saw the student. I called him over. And I stayed calm. I says, do you have a weapon in your class after some small talk uh, in your locker? And he hesitated. And he says, yes, I do. I says, why don't we walk over to your locker and get it? You give it to me. I'll escort you to the principal's office. I'll go with you. And uh, we'll solve it that way, OK? Would you give it to me? He said, yes, sir, Mr. Johnson. Walked over to his locker, opened up the locker. <laughs> he didn't have a knife. He had a turkey carving weapon in his locker, 12 years old. I says, why do you have this? I'm tired of being bullied, and I'm going to get back at the bullies. I said, well, OK. So it's that serious. And a lot of adults don't realize how serious it is. A lot of parents don't realize how serious it is. It is that serious. School-based bullying prevention programs decrease bullying. I wanted to quote a couple other things. 64% of children who were bullied did not report it. 90% of teens who report being cyberbullied have also been bullied offline. There was a documentary uh, that projected just this year that 13 million kids will be bullied this year, and the effects can be deadly. 
And as I mentioned before, as, and the principal can, can uh, uh, concur with this, severe bullying begins in middle school. In middle school, it starts getting serious, starting getting, start to get more violent. And uh, so basically what we have to do is that we have to improve the program. School-based bullying prevention, this is from all my research, decreased bullying by up to 32%. So now, uh, 32%. In other words, most of the programs don't work. So since they're not working, we've got 68% that's uh, still ineffective. Uh, in Newport Beach, I did some studying also. Students have joined together at Corona Del Mar High School to promote positive change. And the reason why is is because economic status in our place of resident does not differentiate the severity of bullying. Many times people will say, well, I live in an upscale neighborhood. And so, well, in an upscale neighborhood, kids bully too, sometimes more severe. And so you can't assume because you live a certain place or you have an economic status in your family or in your home or whatever, and that bullying is not a part of the whole, especially cyberbullying. Okay. Um, I want to play this video, this quick one minute. We use music, and this is, I use music and I use rap. Each one of those illustrations, there's a poem underneath it. There's a training poem. Uh, and the poem, it's, the poem itself is for the training process with the kids and the children. So each one of those illustrations you saw, you will see a little bit later kids performing poetry from this book. And I'll tell you how it happened. Okay. So, um, instructor, first thing that I teach is physical fitness. And the reason why I teach physical fitness in the program, and I'm going to go over exactly what I teach the children in the first lesson or in the first uh, week training, is because a physically fit child's self-esteem may be positively impacted. Escaping from or controlling a bully may be easier if the child is physically fit. Successfully running from a threatening situation with a bully may be the result of being physically fit. Yes, successfully running. When I am teaching... Uh, self-defense to children or to adults. I says one of the biggest uh, self-defense techniques that you can do is run. They go, well, you're a master of the martial arts. I says, yeah, in some cases, it might not be in my favor. The best thing for me to do may be to run, to get out of there, and especially when I'm teaching active shooting training. And I do shoot, uh, teach active shooting training. I taught a group in Redondo Beach about a month ago. Uh, this is the objective of my program. Self-empowerment training for children and teens that prevents and protects against bullying. Transformation as opposed to information. And I hope you don't mind me sitting down because I don't want to get in anyone's way. Uh, I wasn't aware of this until someone came up to me and told me, he says, you are teaching neuropsychological training. <laughs> I says, what? I says, neuropsychological training? He says, yes, that's what you're doing. You're changing the mindset of children and teens and adults. And so I looked it up and I said, OK, what is neuropsychology? It's a study of the structure and the function of the brain as they relate. 
And down here it says neuropsychology looks at language, memory, and emotion leading to specific behavior. Isn't that bullying? All day long. So I'm going, interesting. All right, so maybe I start using this big word and look real smart and everything. Right? Okay. A bully's words and actions are meant to deflate and destroy a child, teen's, and adult's self-confidence. Deflate and destroy a child, teen's, and adult's self-esteem, whether this occurs face-to-face -face or online. Children and teens must know effective ways to avoid, deflate, eliminate, nullify, prevent, protect against, and reverse a bully's negative impact. This can only be done with effective ongoing training. It is okay to have the assembly in the class, in the school, and it's an hour and a half assembly on anti-bullying, and they have someone come in and you do a, a, a session or whatever. That's fine. I have nothing against that. But what I have found out over the years of teaching this is in order for the process to work properly, maybe I can get on this side and actually stand. Why didn't I think of that before? Okay. <laughs> It uh, can be effective, it has to be ongoing training. It has to be something that's repetitious. It has to be something that settles in the mind. When I teach children and teens the, my eight-week comprehensive program, I always get this answer. I will ask them, maybe I have a class of 25 children I just finished working with, and I'll say, do your friends know what you've learned in the, in the last eight weeks? I've never had one kid say, they, they all say, my friends don't know this. Do your friends who are not taking this class, do they know what you've learned in the last eight weeks? They go, they don't know this. I said, do you think they should know it? They says, yes, all kids should know it. The effects of words, words uh, can deflate, they can harm, they can hurt, and they can even kill. Words can build self-confidence, empower, inspire, and heal. Words and how they are used in the Bullies Be Gone project effectively do the latter. When I was being raised as a child and, and in Ken, Arkansas and Kansas City, Missouri, in segregation and overt uh, racism and all the other nasty stuff, uh, it was confusing. So when I tell kids of all ethnic groups when I'm teaching them, I tell them stories because I want them, and every single one of those kids, no matter what nationality, no matter where they come from, they can tell me exactly how I felt because it's exactly how they feel that they're being bullied. And I can say, it was confusing. I'm sitting here seven years of age, and we're at a public train station, and my aunt who raised me, my aunt and uncle, she's telling me not to go don't go to that restroom, go to that one because that one's not for you. I'm a kid. I'm confused. I'm instantly saying to myself, what's wrong with me? Kids who are being bullied, what do they say? What's wrong with me? Something's wrong with me, why are they picking on me? Why do I feel weak? Instructor introduces, I introduce awareness training. I ask the children, what does awareness mean to them? I have them give their definition of being aware. I ask students the meaning of being keenly street and internet aware. Keen street school internet awareness are taught in the program and a number of additional, uh, other ways that uh, we, I teach awareness. I actually teach and we go through these scenarios, the safer side of the street to walk on. I'll take a couple of chairs and I'll set them up like this. And the kids are out there where you are. And I said, there's traffic going this way and there's traffic going that way. And I'll try and get them involved. I'll say, what kind of car do you want this to be? A Lamborghini, they always go with the big stuff. They never go, it's always the high class. I said, now you're walking in this direction, right? And you, there's no law that says you can't be on this side of the street or the other side of the street going in that direction. You can be on either side but one side is safer than the other. 60% of the children will get it right. They'll say, if I'm walking in this direction, facing the traffic is the safer side of the street to walk on. And it is. Awareness is not practiced very much today or, or the way it should be, even with adults. Why? Because of this. We see people, children, teens, and adults walking down the street, walking across the street, 
crossing the crosswalk, and they're like this. Am I right? Yes, they're not aware. This incident happened to a lady who was walking in this direction, and she had her baby strapped to her body with that little harness. I guess you call it a harness. I don't know the technical name. Anyway, the baby was strapped, and she was on her phone. There was a young man walking in this direction on the same side of the street, going here, she's going there. When he got far enough past her, he turned and he ran up behind her and kicked her in the back. She's got a baby. Knocked her to the ground. The, to the phone went flying. He only wanted was the phone. <laughs> he picked up the phone and ran off. Now she's down there struggling, seeing if the baby's okay in the whole process. It should have never happened. The reason why it happened is because the person wasn't aware. How many times, every time I hear on the news of an incident happening in a neighborhood, wherever it happens to be, and there's a crime, how many times have you heard people say, I'm shocked that something like that happened in my neighborhood. Stuff like that never happens over here. They say it all the time. As soon as I hear that, I'm going, they don't, they don't practice awareness. They're assuming because of where you are and where you live, you're totally safe. We're not. It can happen anywhere. Bullying can happen anywhere at any particular time. So we work on blind spots. We have the safer side of the so sidewalk to walk on. Okay, what do you obviously do if you're being followed? We, I practice that with children. We role play it. We actually do it over and over and over again. So it's second nature. Specific awareness training, uh, how to create diversions and the element of surprise when being approached in an uncomfortable manner. When I started teaching the program in, in, in 1985 in Manhattan Beach, I'll tell you how I got started. There was a huge child molestation case going on in Manhattan Beach at the time. Some of you may be aware of it. It was called the Mac Martin child molestation case, yeah. right? And they were found innocent, I guess, or not guilty, whichever one. Uh, but it, the city was in an uproar. And at that time, I was teaching high school and special education. I have my karate studio in Redondo Beach, and I was teaching for the rec department. And surprisingly enough to me, Manhattan Beach changed my whole life. I would, this program probably would not be me if it wasn't for Manhattan Beach and that situation there, because they called me in the office and they said, Al, would you start a program that's not a full-blown karate program? And, and that's how it started. So I would teach children diversion techniques and things to do if they're being, if someone's approaching them, even with someone who they know, someone they know and trust who wants to do something harmful to them. What have we heard in the news recently about people that you trust and you believe in and so forth, and they take advantage of someone, even adults? Okay. <clears throat> I inform the children. Uh, there's a story. I'm not going to go into that because we don't have time. Now we're going to the awareness poem and the illustration. I'm going to ask you to do something for me. On your paper, if you would use, take a look at this illustration. Would you, this is what I have the kids do. They see this illustration first, and I ask them, what is the theme of this illustration, and what could be hidden messages in the illustration? Would you take a couple of minutes and put down what you see? as the theme in that illustration, and what could be the hidden message in that illustration? Let's just take a couple of minutes and write it down for me, please. Now, or if you, you, you want to just say it out loud, then I'll just raise your hand. What is the theme of that illustration, and how does it relate to bullying? And what could be the hidden message? A couple, about a minute and a half. About 30 seconds.
And times. Anyone want to volunteer? Tell me what they, yes, sir. Uh, <coughs> primary message is lack of awareness, walk into danger. Okay. And, and the hidden message is beware of other colors. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. The shirt. The, the shirt? On the taller style. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Any, yes, sir. Haves and the have-nots. Haves and... wealth or objects. Okay. Other people may want it. Now, isn't it... In, yes, yes ma'am. Facial expression, yes. Isn't it interesting that we've gotten three or four different answers, and if we go around the room, we'll get more. Guess what happens with the children? And that's what I want. Mm -hmm. I want them totally involved mm -hmm. in awareness. I want them saying, okay, I'm seeing this, and I'm seeing that, and I'm seeing this. So then it's, we're, in, we're putting it into their mindset. They're learning about awareness. They're seeing different aspects of awareness. And that's basically how I start off the training. I am not going to go over the poem itself, but at the end, you'll see voc uh, awareness vocabulary lesson. In the poem itself, there are bold printed words or bold print phrases. I want them to get the meaning of all these important elements of that poem, to understand it totally before we move on. I want you to know what being keenly aware is. I want you to know what similar traits are. I want you to know what unpleasant, ill-equipped, and so forth. So then, aren't we building the vocabulary at the same time? Yes. Okay. Awareness is the first of many vital skills, concepts children will learn in the program. Parents and teachers now teach important words, phrases, and stanzas from the body of the poem, reinforcing the theme or main idea. The neuropsychological training thing comes in again. We want to build a self-empowerment mindset in children and teens to begin changing the mindset of bullies. And during and after training, parents, teachers, and children must retain the objective of the Bullies Be Gone project training. <clears throat> children who are being bullied are fearful. The words, poems, and music in the Bullies Be Gone project speak to. So in all the, all the 78 poems in the book, and I wrote all of them, and there are 78 illustrations, they speak to either the children who are being bullied or are fearful of being bullied, designed to change their mindset from victim to self-empowerment. They speak to, some of them speak to the bullies themselves, strongly encouraging self-introspection and the ceasing of inappropriate behavior. Some of them speak to parents and teachers who instill more confidence of, of numerous bullying, uh, more awareness, that is, of numerous bullying situations and, and suggestions on how to effectively handle them. And some of them speak to both the bully and the child, teen or adult, being bullied. So the poems are trying, trying to cover all the aspects of who may, who, uh, who, uh, that may be involved in bullying. Now, here is a 15-year-old who actually uh, gave me an opinion uh, of 15-year-old's uh, actual interpretation and responses. In your opinion, I asked him, what is the main idea of the theme of the illustration? His response was, the image shows a bigger guy trying to get the, the little boy's attention. Okay. Then it says, what is the hidden message in the illustration? Don't let a bully get a hold on how you feel or they'll find a way to get to you. So what do we do? We're, 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 I'm, I'm getting kids totally involved in the concept of learning anti-bullying techniques. Not just saying, okay, you need to do this, you need to do that. There are a lot of good programs out there, anti-bullying programs. A lot of them... I must admit, they're none like mine. I guarantee you. Well, they can't use my, my poetry anyway because it's copywritten, so unless I give them permission, right? Or my music. But they're none like this. And I say that not to brag. I say that because of 33 years of teaching this program, starting from scratch. And when I started in Manhattan Beach, I had no idea what I was going to teach. When I went back to them three, three days later and said, after they asked me to do this, I says, yeah, I'll do it. Then I went home and go, what am I going to do? Yeah. What am I going to teach? All right? And I'm going, okay, take your background, take your education, take your teaching, put it all together and come up with something, okay. which fortunately I did. You can see also here, in, in your opinion, what is the theme or main idea of the awareness poem? He had a written response. 
Then I had them do student interpretation of what the awareness poem stanzas are revealing in reference to bullying. So I take two stanzas at a time. So he wrote his response for the first two stanzas in the poem, what he got from them. He wrote his response for three and four. He wrote his response all the way through the poem. What are we doing? Creativity. Creativity. And kids, they totally get involved in it. Totally. I mean, they're just... And then they're creating themselves. So now I ask them, okay, create your own awareness poem. Write your own poem. And so from what they've already learned, now they can create what they think and what they have learned about awareness. Um, this, these uh, young ladies and young, young men, young men also, I did, we put together a DVD in our music studio on my poetry. We had kids, I sent a, uh, did a, a, a uh, what am I trying to say, is I did a casting call. I did a casting call for children to perform the poetry. And I sent out, I looked it up, and did a casting call, and I wanted them to perform the poetry on video in their own homes. And I had uh, sent out the casting calls. They sent me back resumes, and I sent them in. I had over 80 children send me resumes across the country. I had two in a foreign country who sent. And what you're about to see is some of the kids that we chose, and we only chose eight out of the 80, had been bullied themselves. This young lady is, this, these poems are directed toward adults. It's about two minutes long. Kids learn from what their parents say and do. If mom and dad are somehow bullying each other, kids will see it. Guess what their kid might likely soon do? Parents, don't bully each other. By doing so, you're making a huge mistake. Without even knowing it, you're training your kid to respond to other kids the very same way. Mom and dad, if you are bullying each other and your kid gets in trouble at school for bullying too, most of the blame could be placed squarely on you. No one is insisting as parents how you should run your household. However, by not bullying each other as adults, you increase the chances of your kid not becoming a bully tenfold. Parents, don't bully each other. To not bully each other is a healthy thing for your kid and you. No kid deserves to be bullied because they are different, small, overweight, or for any other reason. The same holds true, mom and dad, for the person you are married to. There is no adult around when you bully me. The adult comes after the bullying is over. Your stupid bullying they never see. Too many times, the adult that was not around when you were bullying me, when told about it, doesn't even take your bullying seriously. Too many adults think that some bullying is a natural thing for kids growing up. There is nothing natural about being called nasty names and being pushed and shoved. Why is there no adult around when the bullying happens, especially at school? Having another kid bully you is never too cool. Adults need to pay closer attention to bullying possibilities that are sometimes in plain view. Sometimes adults are supposed to be smart and protect kids when it comes to bullying don't have a clue. Adults should be more aware of what's going on in the hallways restrooms, and on the school grounds. Because it's never a good thing when a kid is bullied and there is no adult around. <clears throat> Hitting the light switch is the next thing that I teach kids. Now, I'm going to ask you, just by looking at hitting the light switch, what do you think that means and how does that relate to bullying? Would you write that down, please? Hitting the light switch. How does that relate to bullying? What does that mean? There it is.
definitely there could be a hidden theme in this way. But first, we need to know what hitting the light switch is and how it relates to bullying. About 30 seconds. Anyone like to give me an answer? Please. Hitting a, yes, Rita. I have a question. Is the person turning the light switch on or off? Okay, I'm going to explain that. I'm, okay, uh, that's good. So let me explain it, and then that might help with how, what you think about it. Here's the drill that I do with hitting the light switch. I have the same 25 kids here, sitting 30, whatever. I go over to the light switch. And I informed them, I says, I want you to look up at the lights that I'm about to flick on and off. I want you to concentrate on those lights totally while I'm flicking them on and off. Then I'm going to come back and I'm going to ask you a question. Don't take your eyes off the lights. So I'll go over and go about five or six times, click, 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 click. Then I'll come back and I'll ask them. How long did it take for the lights to go on and off? They will give me the answers. Split second, some of them nanosecond, microseconds. Okay, all right. And they will give me those answers. Does that help? So now, does that make you change what you thought hitting the light switch is? Anybody? Anybody want to volunteer and tell me what, their answer, what they thought hitting a light switch is, especially after my explanation? Yes, ma'am. Being alert and looking alert. That's part of it. Wake up. That's part of it. Exposing the bully. That's part of it. Change the channel. That's, where do you change the channel? Pardon? Where do you change the channel, Peggy? Right yes, that's it. The mind. If a bully gets, I tell a kid, and this is, happens with adults, if a kid gets in your face to bully you, the first thing that you have to do is hit the light switch in your mind just as fast as I was flicking these lights on and off. In other words, you have to think. Because if you don't think, the bully is going to outthink you. And if the bully outthinks you, then the bully is in control. So it's in your mind. I'm not going to go over the poem because it's really long, but basically what I just did as far as demonstration is exactly what we were talking about. Immediately after hitting the light switch in their mind, children, teens, and adults must implement the three R's and the vital role they play in a bullying situation. Would you write down the first R that you think what the first R is after hitting the light switch? The first of the three R's after hitting the light switch. This is immediate. This is immediate. Bully just got in your face, grabbed your chest, pushed you, shoved you, called your names, did whatever. You hit the light switch in your mind, now you must immediately do something else. This is what children are taught in my program. You have an answer, sir, for the first R? Relax. Yes. That's it. Relax. If you are not relaxed, you cannot respond properly. You can't think correctly, you can't run, you can't control, you can't do anything. The relaxation drill that I teach the kids are pretty simple. It's the one we do in the martial arts. We just simply inhale and exhale a number of times, and that's basically how they relax. Now, I'm going, now if a bully gets in your face, you can't tell the bully, hold on, i got to relax a few times and go through my drill before I solve this problem. You can't quite do that, but you can just relax and take it easy, take a deep breath. What do you think, if they can do that, then therefore they can better the second three R? Anybody want to say what it is? You're close. Yes, something before response. Retreat. React. 
You're going to react. So what does that mean? To immediately decide how you're going to allow yourself to feel in this uncomfortable bullying situation. The kid or the child must take control over how they're going to feel, not the bully. They will either feel afraid, excited, very aware, unaware, confident, not confident, but whatever, they must absolutely relax and decide, how am I going to allow myself to feel? Then they must decide how they're going to immediately, the third or the three R's, and the lady said it over here, respond. respond. Your response should be immediate and confident. So the three R's are to relax, react, and respond. They can walk away, they can run away, they can talk their way out of it, they can physically control or escape. Okay. <clears throat> One thing I teach the children to do is to look the bully straight in the eyes. It's hard to look someone in the eyes when you are, if you're saying, please leave me alone, I don't want any trouble, I don't want them saying, please leave me alone, I don't want any trouble with their head down. I want them saying, please leave me alone, I don't want any trouble, let me go, this is over, it's finished and done, I'm out of here. But I'm doing it like this. I'm not doing it like this. Body posture, body language. Over the years I've taught the program, I've asked children, how did they feel when they were confronted by the bully? I've gotten this answer predominantly most of the time over 33 years, initially. How did they feel? I did not know what to say. I did not know what to do. I was scared and confused. I felt lousy and weak. Those are the answers I get over and over again. Because we're running out of time, I want to go all the way down to cyberbullying. And a young lady talking about social skills, too. Kids primarily learn academic skills in school. However, we must teach kids social skills, too. Kids learn lots of social skills from caring and loving parents as they grow. Kids need to build on social skills taught in the home. There are real world social skills too, kids must know. When a kid decides to bully other kids, it is obvious the bully lacks social skills. Even if kids aren't bullies, but use profanity and foul language, they are lacking social skills. If a kid is disrespectful to parents, teachers, and other adults, they lack social skills. A kid wouldn't even think of becoming a bully if he or she had proper social skills. Learning math, English, reading, writing, and science are all subjects that kids must learn and do. However, it is just as important for kids to be taught proper social skills too. Okay, she goes to four more poems uh, that have to do with bullying, uh, cyberspace bullying because we don't have time. Uh, I want to cover just a couple more that, in fact, I want you to see this young man here because it's very, he's nine years old. And listen to his emotion when he's reciting one of the poems in my book. He's nine. If you bully another kid just one time, that's one time, too many. The pain a kid suffered from a one-time bully is more than plenty. One time is always too many for anything that is wrong. You need to know that being a bully really doesn't make you come off strong. There was one time I talked about being a bully, too, <laughs> just like you. But it took me only one time to think about it and decide bullying wasn't a wise or nice thing for me to do. I suggest you take just one time to sit and deeply think about the nasty things you're doing to other kids. You might be surprised. Hopefully, you'll take one time to think differently about being a bully and plainly see there is never a good reason to be a bully, but there is always a good reason to be the best person that you can be. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't, isn't that wonderful? I mean, that's like... Uh, Brings tears to my eyes. <laughs> it's, uh, and uh, before we finish, uh, since I only have a few minutes, uh, I'm going to, okay. This is one of the, I think, most important poems that I wrote in that book, in this book. And this same kid is performing it 
And I just want you to see him perform my difference is my strength, because that's universal. My difference is my strength. I had teachers say, I'm going to use this in the classroom the next time. Listen to this young man perform this poem. And then we're going to end up before Peggy kicks me out of here. <laughs> my difference is my strength. The difference in the way I look, walk, talk, or what I prefer in life is not my weakness. My difference is my strength. I'm not ashamed of who I am. No matter how many nasty things you say about me, my head will be held high. My difference is my strength. You have to live with your ignorance and hate. Unless you change, you will carry the heavy burden for the rest of your miserable life. That heavy load will eventually weigh you down and cut like a knife. You'll never be the good and nice person you could have been. You'll never experience the beauty of humankind. My difference is my strength. I'm happy with and proud of who I am. My strength lies in my heart and mind. Your needless criticism of me for no good reason shows how shallow a person you really are. My difference in my strength. Do you even have a clue that your nasty tone unnecessarily goes way too far? My difference is my strength. Your weakness lies in the special things you do. My difference is my strength. However, you are not a lost cause. In my heart, I truly believe there's still hope for a positive change somewhere inside you. One last time, let me remind you of the powerful message to you that I sent. My difference is my strength. My difference is my strength. Hmm. Wow. Pretty strong, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Have you ever thought of selling this to the PBS panel? Yes. We're, so, that, so that, especially here in California, because that message needs to go to every immigrant child. That's interesting. That's interesting. Every immigrant child needs to have that confidence. Thank you. That's interesting. Thank you for the idea. I will approach that. So I'd like to end up, because my time is up, by simply saying that, number one, thank you for listening. And uh, I hope that you get a good uh, an idea of what my program is about. And that's just the beginning. And I teach body language, I teach awareness, I teach active shooting training, uh, I teach, uh, it's comprehensive. And I do feel like I have the most comprehensive anti-bullying program in the nation. I really do. Because I really don't think anyone, ha well, let's put it this way, it is unlikely that another program has the background and experience that I have and the 33 year track record. So uh, if you're interested, I do have, some extra books, if you'd like that. I have a special offer for you guys, if you're interested. I am uh, also beginning to certify others to teach the program, and uh, so we can spread the program nationwide a lot faster. And I, uh, could, it's going to be online also. And so uh, my card, uh, cards are on the desk, so please feel free to give me a call if you have more questions. And if you have any questions now, please, please ask me. We, we have time. I've been, I've been, you know, a lot of people ask me, are you going to talk to Melania Trump? And he, she needs to hear from you. I said, yeah, I know, but. This is supposed to be her thing. I know, but she's, yeah, I know. But I said, then I have to deal with the other person. Yes. Yeah, well, you could deal with him because he'd be afraid of Marshall. Probably so. Yes, sir. Yeah, in terms of uh, developmental psychology, you say bullying starts in middle school, but then does it peak and start going down? Because I hear it. 10 and 20 year high school reunions, people's personalities have changed. People who were this are no longer. And as grumpy old men get older, all of a sudden they start having boundaries and stand up for themselves. So tell me. The, the, bullying, doesn't, the bullying doesn't start in middle school. The severity of um, the severe bullying starts in middle school. But it does get to a point, because <clears throat> I, was, I, was, uh, I, was, I was telling Rita when she wrote the article, I was a fake bully myself in school. Fake bully. I sound like <clears throat> someone else, don't I? Anyway, because I was a fake bully in school because I wanted to impress the gangbangers, but it goes to a certain point where you're right. It does change and you're, because your personality changes, but some people are older bullies and they, don't, they never get out of that, that cycle. They keep that cycle. They just do it a different way. Yes, Rita? 
No, uh, we didn't go over that. I had some responses in the poems where I actually teach children to paste and respond a certain way with certain phrases reacting to what the bully said a certain way from some of the words. And you could, if you ask me, I look back at this book and sometimes I wonder, how did I write this? Did I really write this? You know, because um, I guess it's my you know, God-given gift, I guess, to do it. But I do have responses, and we use, well, there are about five or six cyber, anti-cyberbullying poems in there where we respond to the bully online. In, yes, ma'am. Uh -huh. But do you see any need for a program for the bullies themselves? I mean, like in a school ground, you know the, the, the significant bullies. They're the same people. Um, would there be any kind of a program that would help them? <clears throat> well, I try and touch on that. Remember, the, the, the nine-year-older was talking about that. He was speaking to a bully. Mm -hmm. He was talking directly one time, mm -hmm. and he's talking to the bully. He's telling them, just doing this. Now, I'm a kid telling another kid just doing this one time. So I've tried to cover all the areas. And one of the things that I, that I Andrea, is that correct? One of the things, Andrea, that I, that I think makes my program as broad and, and encompassing as it is, whenever I have children and I finish up with a class, I'll ask them, I says, I want you to, first of all, evaluate this class for me, especially the older kids. Uh, and I want you to write down what you got from this class or what you didn't get from the class. And I want you to write down any suggestions that you have to make it better because this will make the class better for me. And I've learned from them, and I continue to learn from them. And so uh, over a period of time, I've learned that, you know, I have to take out certain things and to add other things and so forth. So, uh, yes, we cover that, and, and we try and cover it just as well as you know, prevention the other way around. Okay, I thank you thank so you. much for your thank attention. You so much, Appreciate, it. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. There's thank books you. in the back.